In a few hours, these streets will be jammed with traffic, and shoppers, and browsers, and the sidewalks filled with vendors, many of whom are artists. The artists arrive the earliest, at 7 a.m. Spots That's right, I, and I was in one on the other block once. Okay, uh, good. So but that one over there is legal. That's part of it. Since Lawrence gets a That's ticket. Fine. That's uh, the guy that does, uh, what's his name, Sergio? That's his beam. I wonder if he knows that he left it out here. Oh. He usually sets up right over there. Well, I think if really? they come, they might come with a different no. focus. Be the same. Well, I think it'll be. Uh, I think it might be a slightly different focus. I think that they may emphasize the illegal merchandising and stuff. But I don't think that they're going to come after us. They seem like the community seemed. Uh, you know, there were some people that were very resistant, but uh, it's a minority. I think most of the people, or even at the meeting, mm -hmm. seemed to feel that it wasn't the artists that were, were the problem. That it's the illegal merchandising which is cramming everything in. So. Maybe he left it here last night or his girlfriend. But they know that we do bring business down here for them. So that's that's a significant movement on, uh, on, in, in our in our side. How we set up our displays, uh, keeping space between each other, uh, and then working uh, against uh, the uh, process of these people coming down and taking multiple spaces, three, four, five spaces illegally. And uh, I think if we uh, do that and show good faith in working with the community, I think we're Definitely. fine. Definitely. We have to support each other. Yeah, that's the deal. Because of what? Their constitutional right, First Amendment. Okay. Because of what? Their constitutional right, First Amendment. Can I get your report, please? Okay. Okay. So what's going to happen with these summonses? I don't know. We'll wait and see. All right. But last year, as I say, 23 out of 23 cases, we lost. I think we're off the point. The point is, on West Broadway, there's no peddling. For one, it seems to me that it's a restricted area, and I understand that the art issue is a complicated issue, and if it was just art on the street and it happened on a Saturday and Sunday and there was nothing we could do about it, well, that's the way it is. From I think we're going to focus on it as, as the artist, I think we're going to lose. I think we can't focus on the artist. We have to focus on everything else that's going on there that's not permitted. We didn't we set out. We agree. We agree. We didn't okay. set out to focus on artists per se. We went out to focus on illegal vendors, and we went out to focus on those that were in violation of the DCA statutes. Those that were on the street that knew that they were illegitimate, that they were vending goods that were not going to be deemed artwork. As I was saying, this guy with the hats. So what we were coming, so we were going, he hurriedly packed up and he left. And then he came back after he left. Yeah. Maybe so, yeah, sir. No, but, uh, maybe so. so. He more often to keep those people off the street. Yeah. How long have you been coming? Yeah. Go. Yeah. 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 Hey, I'm a dancer. I'm trying to support myself. I can understand where some people are like coming from. That like they do all their own work and they bring it down here every weekend. And they're like selling their stuff, but I'm trying to pay rent. As an artist, it's just no good for me because people who come down here, they say this is supposed to be an art center and they're selling salt shakers. I think there should be a place for real artists as painters. Jeweler can be an artist as well. Art, art class, this is definitely art. If you look, each piece is, is one piece. You don't repeat it. So, and there's no one, not, not even one place in the city for, for pure art. There's been a big problem lately with the influx of vendors, people finding out that this is a good place to sell, and they've been coming down selling watches, hats, lately socks and t-shirts, and that's what a lot of the businesses are having problems with. Yeah, if you see uh, somebody selling on the sidewalk without this, they're illegal. So they don't and the problem them. is uh, when a uh, store complained, right? Police came down here to, oh, illegal, they run away. So we check vendor with the license, stay here. We got a ticket. 
they find out a lot of reasons. So, that's a problem. Okay. What's your name? Bu. My name is Bu. Video from Vietnam. Walk around Soho. It's not many vendors with the license. I'm, I'm talking about legal ones. And I've been counting to see how many of them around Soho. Probably around 12, a dozen of, of us. And then how, how, how can we, we make a trouble to the neighborhood? Only one block from spring, from spring to spring, you can count about 23 illegal vendors. I hope if something will happen to, uh, to work it out to see how to solve the problem. You're not going to get an argument with us regarding illegal vending. It is growing all over the city. You realize that. Not just in Soho, not just on West Broadway, not just on Canal Street, all downtown. If you walk around the neighborhood, if you go into the village, you'll see the same thing. If you go to Queens Boulevard, you're going to see the same thing. I don't right? think it is growing astronomically. I West Broadway, and I think taxes I understand that, man. And I should have the right to exit my building and go and hail a taxi if I can't walk to the in your argument, we're not arguing that point with you, ma'am. Not for a second. On a given Saturday or Sunday, we're lucky, we're lucky if we have six police officers, eight is really good, to man four cars. And that's the answer. Every radio on every 911 call that is generating from Houston Street all the way down to Battery Park. Most of the people here are artists. It's a shame, you know, we see it and then police comes, they check, is it real art? And it, I feel bad for them because they feel bad to do it because they see it's artists, they have no place. Something has to be in control, but it seems that nobody wants to take control on this street. They prefer just clean, clean the street and that's it. I am right in front of Daniel Wu, and they like me here. And the police will come down, and they don't care. Daniel Wu himself can come out and say, "I don't mind this person setting up in front of my store. The police don't care. They will, they'll ticket me." And sometimes they confiscate your work, and they check warrants. That they were doing that a couple weeks ago. They were coming down. They were checking to make sure you had tax ID number, which is the big thing they can get you on. They were measuring how far you were from the door, which is the second big thing. And then they were checking to see if you had any outstanding warrants. And they were arresting people, apparently. It would be nice to not have to worry about the possibility of police trying to close us down, you know. As far as I understand it, legally we're allowed to be here, but then there's certain things have been set up, like the 20-foot law from any um, doorway, which is completely ridiculous because there's no legal space on the street if, if that's true. Um, so I guess, you know, my thing is just that we can be here and, and not feel like we're always having to uh, watch who's coming around the corner. Put one officer on West Broadway, he'll make an observation in the first two minutes that he's out on the street, he'll make an arrest, and then and he's gone from the street for the rest of the day. That's the, that's the way it works. Once you make an arrest, once an officer makes an arrest, by and large, that officer is gone for the rest of his work day. He is put, he's finished. Done. That's the system. The rest of the man. Ma'am, you're shaking your head. How many more? Once you six, once six, seven, six, seven hours, who do you need back for? I'm going to ask you four times already. But I'm going to tell you you're going to be wrong. There's no argument there. Uh, uh, if they would supply me with a million more police officers, then I'd send police officer B out and take care of the next one. That's why we went out the last time when we did the operation with the legal bureau, we had the tarot and we filmed and we did everything. We wrote 23 summonses and we made some confiscations. We, had, we were there all day. We went from one spot to the next spot to the next well, spot. Well, it's time consuming. And we, and we lost on every case. And it was, uh, and it was frustrating. We just wanted to come out here to, to, make, uh, exactly. to make a living. Exactly. Not come out here to fight in the store right. or the residential. That's right. Exactly. Okay. Excuse me, George, you're not running the I know. Scene. You're always interrupting. I just put my hand up to ask a question. Let's not fight amongst this. I'll shoot off your mouth. Why are you? Listen. She's interrupting you anyway. To everybody that has, to everybody in the room. Only you are. I want a time, please. To everybody in the room that has concern with regards to peddler issues up in the cell area on West Broadway. 
We did this block of enforcement on the 20th, as Sergeant McGowan said, we will definitely attempt in the future to provide more law enforcement in the area. There's a real estate agent that bought this building, and I had heard from the super of this building, oh, when he opens up, when he buys this building, he's not going to let anyone set up in front of the building, which he actually has no right to do, because the streets are public domain. I also heard when Swatch opened up, because they're a very new company, that they weren't going to let any artists set up in front of their door, which would have been a bigger problem for me, because it's really impossible to get a 20 foot from the door uh, limit here. But they opened up and they love the artists. They want to promote that, actually. So that was the best damn thing that could happen for me, was to have Swatch open up. The artists should have the right to really come and sell. Because the galleries, to be part of a gallery is very difficult. Then they get a big, large commission, and you cannot live out of that. So you must reach the public. The only way to reach the public is by exposing the street and selling it directly for less price and, and be able to, to be making more. Because <laughs> if you make a painting and nobody wants it in a gallery, that stifles the, the artists, and they have to move to other directions to, to make their living. Sure, it's uh, it's our right to do that, you know, First Amendment, right, to, uh, and, you know, it's, you get tired of sitting around your studio making art and putting it in galleries that might sell one a year or so, so you take it out and sell it every week or every day in the time you want to. We'll have been out here every weekend. Rain, well not in the rain, but snow, winter time, summer time, year round. And I've been doing this without having to have the benefit of a side job for over a year now. I, it's, uh, it's, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of hard work though. It's a lot of selling yourself. I find that uh, during the week I paint Monday to Friday, just exclusively I'm in painting mode, and on the weekend I'm in businessman mode, because you can't really put the two together, you know? You have to be able to sell your work. One of my favorite sayings is you can't be a collector of your own work. <laughs> There's not much of what was Soho left here, and this is like one of the last things. I mean, it's not that many galleries even anymore. You know, there's some, but um, I think it's just, this is just good, sort of, to keep the history of Soho sort of alive a bit in the present day. You know what the only problem here is, though, with, in this regards to this issue? Not everybody in the community shares this particular sentiment. There are people in the community that see it as just the flavor of Soho, and it, it's a, it's a one-time I go up and down, Frida, I did it on Western Broadway two weekends ago, Frida, and I must have heard from three or four different store owners, I can't believe you're doing this. This attracts people to the neighborhood, this attracts customers to the store. This business. Well, I don't know if the owners are not, man. They're representatives of the store that came out to break my horns. Oh, they pay taxes. They pay taxes. Yes, they do. They don't pay real estate taxes. I think we're a benefit, you know. I think um, I think a lot of people come to Soho because there's stuff happening on the street, and it's not just in the stores and galleries. And you know, as there's more more and more corporate um, stores opening up in this area, um, it's like if we're not here, you might as well just go to a mall somewhere, you know. Um, it's what makes this neighborhood different from any other area either in, in the city itself or just any shopping district anywhere. The place I come from, there's a whole street for artists. There's one street What's the name just street? for, it's uh, it called Nachalat Bin Yamin, it's in uh, Tel Aviv. If you walk there, it's a very high quality art. You won't see nothing commercial or things repeating themselves. It makes the city interesting for tourists. It's a very nice, entertaining street. And makes the city nice. This guy's trying to get me to maybe do the, a mural on the side of the building here. I guess Swatch is really friendly to artists because he said that uh, 
New York artists especially. I mean, if you if you're a New York artist, you've got some kind of credibility. So, selling on the streets of Soho has gotten me international acclaim because galleries say, "Oh, big New York artist." You know, it doesn't matter. I'm on the street, which I'm happy being on the street. I really don't have any desire to get into any New York galleries because I'm in galleries around the country and. Uh, just now in Paris also, and the majority of what I do is on the street. The street is my main source of income. And it's also really special because you get to see the people that are buying your work. You get to have an interaction with them. Most of the people on the work are looking for something affordable. They want to meet the artist. They want to know what prompted me to paint something like this. And there's a few collectors. And things have... have Blossom. There's a lot of repeat customers. There's a lot of people from other countries that come down here. The opportunity to meet people directly and talk directly about my work is unique. This, artists don't normally get that opportunity. Uh, they're basically fairly isolated people in their creative domain. But here's an opportunity for the artist to actually speak directly to the public at large, get feedback immediately about their work. And in my case, it's been transcendent. Uh, you know, I worked at a Rolling Stone magazine for several years as a photographer, and I've uh, shot uh, photographs that have been published in almost every major publication in the country. But I was very tired of my occupation as a celebrity photographer, so I brought my ballet work out onto the street. Within a very short time, I had been uh, I'd uh, done the design for Lincoln Center's Dance of the Met season, and had a couple of my clothing designs into. Um, uh, Capizio, uh, which is a national chain store, uh, had a major exhibition in Montreal, another one in New Jersey, another one in San Francisco, all because I was able to bring my original artwork onto the street and show it directly to people. But I mean, you know, Soho, I don't want to say Soho is dead as uh, what it was. It is turning into something else, something not so pretty. This gentleman's been trying to speak all meeting and then we'll wrap this meeting up. Great. Okay. Uh, I wrote this out this afternoon. I timed it. It takes me a minute and ten seconds, so bear with me, please. Thank you, Fried. I'll leave you enough time at the end. My name is Lawrence White. Many of you... Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, many of you know me as your neighbor for nearly 23 years, but tonight I come before you as a professional artist. I'm well aware of the sad struggle to maintain a sense of heritage here in our neighborhood. Much has changed, and so much of that change is due to the e economics of high rent. Most of its tenants live under some protection, but the shopkeepers and gallery owners have little of the same comfort. They simply cannot compete financially with the mega international businesses that have put the money on the barrelhead and have thereby become our newest neighbors. Many of our old friends have been forced to move or go out of business altogether. Why has Soho become so attractive to so many? Certainly in the 50s and 60s, things were not this way. All of that began to change with the arrival of the art community. Soho became transformed in the collective mind as a mecca for artists of all kinds. Now the contributions of those artists are being forgotten, and those that carry on, the, uh, carry on are routinely being discharged from the area. Tonight, I come to you with a symbolic peace pipe. <laughs> I hope you will come to realize that there are many legitimate, professional, unique, and recognized artists in your midst. These artists are not only trying to display and represent their work, they work with pride and responsibility in the community they love. This is a valuable resource that, if lost, will forever change the face of Soho. Speaking for myself and the other artists I have spoken to, we agree with you that these rights are being abused by a few and that far too many illegal vendors in gen uh, of general merchandise have set up in multiple places. Therefore, we hereby offer to meet with you and any other proper authority to find some reasonable solution in an atmosphere of cooperation. And this way, we can together protect the heritage of our neighborhood and the art, which is uniquely Soho. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paulo Simeo. I'm an artist from Cuba. I've um, been here in New York for three years, three and a half. I'm glad to be on the street and a uh, beautiful neighborhood. I do metal work and sculpture. So this is your stuff? This, your this would be it. Thank you. How long have you been coming? 
Uh, about a year ago. Yeah. Um, I don't come after Christmas. It's much too cold. And I came up in the spring again, and I didn't make any money, so I had to get a job. How far away? Um, about two and a half hours up in the Catskills. It is a long trip. I have to get up very early. As soon as you get up. <laughs> I usually actually don't go to sleep because I wouldn't get enough sleep and I'd oversleep and I wouldn't get up. Painter by trade, but performance artist for one for one day only. Support other sort of assorted big businesses. Down with the small companies. Challenge them to be bigger. Challenge them to, to market their stuff to companies that have a lot of money. Challenge them to take over ghettos. We should make malls. Not war. It's like my right as a citizen of Manhattan to talk about whatever I want to talk about and if you know if I want to discuss issues of you know capitalism and whatnot that I should just go ahead and do it why are we afraid to like spend money or not spend money why why is there this huge difference between the rich and the poor and why are the, the rich moving into all these poor neighborhoods I mean when I first came to New York the East Village was not a place that I wanted to live these days it's great I could go there and it's amazing and why is that? Well, because the rich are coming in and taking over from the poor. I mean, I'm guilty of it myself because I live in East Village. At least if I can bring bring some light to people and sort of have fun with it at the same time, that's what I like to do. What do you think about these artists? I love them. I think they're wonderful. I think they bring tourists to Soho. I think without them, the streets are very quiet. I'm here on the weekdays and it's quite... Um, Quiet and on the weekends it's buzzing and there's activity and excitement. I like it very much. How, how long have you been artist? 41 years. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived around the country. I lived in Chicago for 20 years. I lived in Boston for about a year. I lived in uh, Washington, D.C. for six years. I lived in Atlanta for 10 years. Where do you live now? I live in New York City now. Manhattan, Manhattan right. But you get a lot of tourists that come through here. Uh, that's one thing, but uh, a lot of restaurants and things. And then you get people from the city, actually, that just come down to uh, see, the, see the art on the streets, a lot of them, you know, and not just the shops. One of the services that the artists perform in Soho is that they create an environment which is safe, it's exciting, and it's stimulating. So people can come here and feel free to uh, browse around, uh, look at the art, uh, talk with the artists, uh, and get uh, a feeling for New York, uh, which is unique, really, to New York. Uh, and I think that that alone uh, makes it uh, uh, something that's a valuable asset to New York City. And, I, and really, I, I think in the, in the bottom line, people have to consider the environment that they're creating with not only you know uh, uh, the uh, what they're doing personally, but what they're how they're maintaining the neighborhoods. Uh, the neighborhoods are being lost in New York and transformed because of the escalating rents. And uh, uh, you just see the, the, the transition. The transition is without tradition. Uh, this empty lot right here is probably going to become a glass tower instead of one of the old beautiful uh, structures. You know, you can see the quality and class of uh, this architecture here. That's what Soho is, but a, a glass tower here doesn't seem appropriate, but that's what's happening to New York, and New York should consider uh, an abatement of that process and the maintaining of the traditions here in the neighborhood, uh, because uh, if they lose it, uh, it can't be regained, and uh, it's so valuable that uh, it would be a shame to, a shame to see it go.